everybody. Welcome to our community education video. Um, today, we're talking about using pet therapy with patients who are receiving hospice care. And I'm joined by uh, Pets on Wheels volunteer and owner of, Fer of Ferrets and Friends, Alex Rose. So Alex, thanks so much. I see lots of uh, uh, activity behind you. Thanks, yeah. for thanks so much for having me. Awesome. Um, so before we get into talking about some of the awesome friends that you have with you, um, I wanted to ask a little bit about you and how you became a volunteer for Pets on Wheels and just if you could share a little bit about who you are and what you do. Yeah, so I'm a social worker. Um, so before I was a volunteer at Pets on Wheels, I worked at a day program for adults with disabilities. And in that program, um, sometimes they would have pet therapy, they would use dogs, but sometimes the participants would be afraid of the dogs. So I started bringing my ferrets to work with me. And that's kind of how I got started using exotic animals as therapy animals. And so when I moved to Maryland in 2014, I started with Pets on Wheels, um, using my ferrets to continue the therapy work. Come on, here, Jones. <laughs> So you said a little bit, so ferrets are used in therapy. I mean, I guess in my head, it's just always, you see pictures of people with dogs, but there's sure. other animals that you can use. And you've got a couple of great examples with you right now. The, the birds that are joining you, can you tell me a little bit about who's with you? All right, so Missy right here is the Eclectus parrot. She is five years old. And then Jubilee behind me is a Harlequin macaw, and she is three years old. She's a little nervous about some of the uh, technology with Zoom here, so she may be coming in and out. Okay. Hey, how you doing? So when you're doing therapy, pet therapy with someone um, like in hot, who's receiving hospice care, what's, what's helpful? Like, tell me, how does that happen? It, let's first of all talk about in person, what that looks like. And then I'd really like to sort of talk about how you've had to adapt during COVID and the birds will part. But in person, what's that look like? Sure, so um, in person, kind of, so I use ferrets and I use birds. So you see the birds here when we talk about the ferrets. Um, and they each kind of bring different stuff to pet therapy. So the nice thing about the birds is that they're very colorful, they're very kind of active, they're very, you know, I think, especially when they're visiting patients in hospice, not just for the patients, but also for the family that might be there, it kind of, bring something special. They kind of, you know, a good memory to have with your loved one as they're kind of going through this tough time. And then with the ferrets, the nice thing about them is that they're smaller, they're, um, you can, for people that have more issues with dexterity, the ferrets are gonna be more curious, they're gonna be kind of in their personal space. So sometimes people that don't have much control over their, their hands and their arms, um, that's a little bit easier than a dog or people that are afraid or allergic to dogs. They're happy to have the ferret. That makes sense. So you were talking a little bit before we actually went on camera about Jubilee, who's behind you, and and the virtual the virtual visits with doing pet therapy. How and how it's been different during COVID nineteen. So talk talk to me a little bit about that. How how has that shifted? So it is tough with COVID-19. We, Pets on Wheels is still doing virtual visits. Um, so the way that it's set up is the animal is there. Um, and depending on what the facility is, sometimes we can't see the other person because of confidentiality. Sometimes staff will be there to kind of relay questions and things of that nature. Um, Jubilee does say hi on cue. I'm gonna see if she'll do that, but she's being a little nervous this morning. Okay. Jubilee. Hey, Jubilee. Say hi. Hi, Jubilee. Hi. Did you get that? I got that. That's awesome. Thank you, Jubilee. There you go. Good job. That's awesome. So she is able to do that on visits, um, but she, like I said, she is a little weirded out by the cameras. Yeah. I, I would think it's got to be challenging I mean, because you still want to provide that connection and the, the benefit of what the pets can do, but you have this, this, you know, new challenge with doing everything virtually. Yeah, so, I mean, she is still very unusual. People love seeing her. So she's more comfortable. Sometimes she'll dance around on camera. But. 
So are you using the ferrets still as, as well for, for virtual visits or? I haven't used the ferrets for virtual visits. Um, I do have one with me if you would like to meet him. He's actually not one of the therapy ferrets because they're all kind of uh, more high energy guys. They wouldn't want to sit nicely for this interview. Right. So I've got my older guy with me. Oh, oh so cute. So this is Jack. Hi, Jack. But he's here to represent the ferrets. Okay. He's a five-year-old boy. Um, ferrets usually only live about five to seven years. So his, he's got some hair missing because he's got adrenal disease, Aww. which is very difficult with them when they get older. But he's just being a really good the, uh, the two therapy ferrets are Pabu and Abu. They're both three years old, and they would be just all over the place. So these guys normally, when they're doing therapy, they're pretty good at like sitting with people and kind of smelling around so people get that. Especially when I'm working with adults with disabilities, um, it's kind of a more interactive experience if they're limited with their motor skills. And they're very forgiving. Um, if people don't have good motor skills, they're trying to hold them. They kind of, it's not really a wrong way to hold a ferret. Okay. So they're very forgiving about that. That's so, there's that, I mean, it's so cool. Like just to think that, that you have that ability and that it's a different type of animal than, you know, one usually expects or anticipates providing mm -hmm. comfort for those. Like there's different and the, and the use of, yeah, the, the reasons why. And there's always lots of stories. People like to talk about their family members that had birds or their family members that had ferrets. There's always a lot of stories that usually are part of those therapy visits. That's awesome. So I, I know with patient confidentiality, well, first I'm going to back up a second. How long have you been volunteering for, you might've said that at the beginning and I might not have caught it. How, how long have you been volunteering for Pets on Wheels? So I started in 2014 and then there was a lapse because um, for a while they required a December vaccine for ferrets, okay. um, which can, uh, they can have a really bad allergic reaction. So I had paused for a bit um, and then I came back, I think in 2018. Okay, all right. So since you've been doing that, that's still quite a while. I mean, between 2014 and, and today and 2018 and today, um, mm -hmm. I'm guessing you have some stories or some specific memories and knowing that we have to be mindful of patient confidentiality, I was hoping you could maybe share something that really resonated with you or, or a couple that have really kind of stuck with you over the years. Yeah, I have, I probably have a few stories. Okay. Um, so one was with my original therapy ferret Gambit. Um, and it was a facility that we visited like every week. Um, a lot of the participants there weren't verbal, uh, and every week there's this one fellow that he, that Gambit would always sit with him and would like lick his beard and would just be like, all. Oh. it was like, I was like, oh, I don't know, man. It was kind of, kind of gross, honestly. It grossed me out a little bit. Um, and then one day, one of the staff there told me that they were so happy I was there because the only time that they see this gentleman smiling is when the ferret visits. Oh. And her would have known that because I mean, whenever I'm there, I'm there with the ferret. And so I think, you know, animals kind of have this intuition of what people need and they kind of have this like emotional intuition. And I like to think that Gambit knew that he needed like a little extra attention because he always sat with him longer than other people. And he'd always be like, look at his beard and all in his face. Right. right. Just really providing that, that direct. Yeah. Personal. yeah. Wow. And then another story I have has to do more with like the family visiting a hospice patients um, there was a chameleon that also uh, works with us, that I worked with, um, and so this family was from Africa and they wanted to have a chameleon come visit um, because where they're from, there are some chameleons native there. So I brought the chameleon and um, the gentleman's daughter and I believe another family member was there and it was just really special being able to hold the chameleon and they were telling me stories about finding them in their backyard and stuff like that. I think it was just nice from, you know, everything that happens in hospitals just to kind of have this special experience. And what a direct connection. Like what a, yeah, that's so cool. That's really yeah. cool. How about with Jubilee or with any of your other, the birds? I, I'm interested in. Um, oh, what are you looking at? What'd you see? So Jubilee, I mean, it's just like 
everywhere I go with her. Everybody always wants to ask, like, does she talk? She's always dancing. She's always partying. Um, probably my favorite encounter with her was one gentleman was reading a book and he was reading it to her and she would just sat nicely on the armrest while he read to her. Oh my gosh. That's so cool. That's awesome. Well, I, I know everyone is probably super appreciative too of you spending time virtually trying to, to work around and, and, you know, provide care for folks in whatever way, you can during this time. So <laughs> Jubilee's like, yeah, I'm not feeling the. She's like, why isn't the attention on me? You're facing the wrong direction. I know. Yeah, what's going on? Are you jealous? Are you a jealous bird? Here, let me see if she'll. Here. Want to come step up? Come step up. Hey. How old, Alex, how old is she? She's three, so she's actually still a baby. Okay. Um, built until they're about seven or eight years old. She isn't going to get any bigger. She just needs more time to like emotionally mature. Okay. And do you do anything specific training with her? I mean, I saw like you waving, saying hello. Is so there right now she's working on flight training. Okay. Um, so, because so. Birds like instinctively know how to fly, like if they like they know how to be in the air, but they still have to learn how to like turn and slow down and land. So that's the current training that we're doing with her. And there's usually there's like a bunch of tricks that we'll do. Are you good? She's great. She's great. She's so pretty. Are you doing okay? I know. There's a person on the screen and they're talking. See me? Hi, Kimberly. Hi. You want to say hi? Hi. That was awesome. Hi, Jubilee. Alex, thank you so much for taking time to talk about Jubilee and the rest of your ambassadors for Pets on Wheels and, and about pet therapy and, and how you've been able to sort of shift and still provide it during COVID-19. I'm, I'm, I'm appreciative of you sharing that information. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I also want to make sure to thank the John and Kathy Belcher Institute for their generous support of the community education programs at the Hospice of the Chesapeake. Thanks.